Now let's have a look on question number 67. A musician performed following act. He dipped rupees 50 note in a 50% solution of alcohol in water and held it on the burning flame. But the note did not burn. In magic shows, often magicians do the similar kind of activity. You need to just find out the reason behind it. Basically, the note when dipped in a solution of alcohol, 50% solution of alcohol where water is also present, that water does not allow note to achieve its ignition temperature. And that's why this note did not burn. On the basis of this, you can easily choose the option. Which option is correct? Yes, the correct option in this particular case is option C. So, I'll choose this option C as my correct answer and this is the correct one. After this, the turn is for question number 68. Here is question number 68. Substance X is white crystalline solid. Let me mark it. We have a substance X that's a white crystalline solid which melts after 10 seconds on burner flame. It is soluble in water. Solubility, another physical property is given and it is insoluble in carbon tetrachloride. It is a poor conductor of electricity in molten state as well as in the form of aqueous solution. Hence, we conclude that substance X is. You need to identify the nature of the substance X. One important thing is there that this substance X melts after 10 seconds on burner flame. The second important thing, it is poor conductor of electricity. So, it can be covalent compound, right? Now, the next thing, it is soluble in water while it is insoluble in carbon tetrachloride. Water is a polar solvent and on the basis of that, we can simply conclude if X is soluble in water, it should be polar also. So, two things we have identified here. One, it is covalent in nature as well as it is polar because it is insoluble in carbon tetrachloride and soluble in water. On the basis of that, we need to identify the option. No, it's not an ionic compound. It's a non-polar covalent compound. No, it is also wrong. It is a polar covalent compound. That's correctly given here in option C. Now, a pure element. No, it's not a pure element. So, on the basis of this, the correct answer for my question becomes option C. I hope it is also clear. Now, the turn is for the next question. Now, here is question number 69. In a beaker, 50 ml of normal HCl solution is there. Let me mark it. 50 ml of normal HCl solution was taken and ammonia was passed through it for some time. The content of the beaker were then titrated further which required 60 ml of semi-normal NaOH solution. How much ammonia was passed through the beaker? See, very first thing, HCl you have. Ammonia gas was passed through it. Neutralization occur. Further, the remaining solution is titrated and for its titration, you need 60 ml of semi-normal NaOH solution. Further neutralization. So, what you need to find out? The amount of ammonia that was passed through the beaker that you need to identify. Right. So, in this case, we need to find out amount of ammonia. How much ammonia? To solve this question, first of all, we need to consider the milli equivalence of HCl as well as NaOH. With the help of that, we will find out the milli equivalence of ammonia. Then we will find out the amount of ammonia. So, in this particular case, first thing is the milli equivalence of HCl, those you need to find out. In this case, NV is the formula normality into volume you need to take. Normality of the HCl is normal, one normal it is, one is the normality, multiply its volume, 50 ml. So, the milli equivalence becomes 50 milli equivalence, right? The second thing, you need to find out the milli equivalence of NUH. And that we are also finding out with the help of NV. So, this value becomes semi-normal it was. Half is the normality. 0.5 we are taking. Multiply it by the volume. The volume of NaOH which is required for the titration was 
60 ml. So, I am just multiplying 60 here. It is 30. So, milli equivalent of NaOH 30. The next part is starting from here. The process of neutralization is there. This is the process that is going on. Here should be the milli equivalence of HCl should be equal to the sum of the milli equivalence of ammonia plus the milli equivalence of NaOH that you are using for the titration process, right? This value we already have. What is that value? This is 50 that is equal to milli equivalence of ammonia plus 30, 30 is the milli equivalence of NaOH. So, very simple we found that the milli equivalence of ammonia are 50 minus 30, 20. Now, with the help of this we can find out the moles of ammonia and with the help of moles of ammonia we can find out the amount of ammonia also. Let us find out. moles of ammonia. This is milli equivalent. So, equivalence would be 20 into 10 days to the power minus 3 moles. And what would be the mass of ammonia? That is the final answer. What is the molar mass of ammonia? 17 grams per mole. So, just multiply 20 into 10 days to the power minus 3 multiply 17 to it this way. So, this becomes 0.34 gram. Is it clear? Now, let us check where this value is given. In the given options, this value is correctly given here in option B. So, just mark it to get the correct answer. I hope this question is clear. Now, let us take the next question.